Welcome. This is Pastor Jeff Snow from First Baptist Church in Port Hope. Coming to you from a different location than we have for the last few weeks. Um, the sound hasn't been that great doing it in my office, so we're trying to do it um, from the church sanctuary. And we're running sound through the soundboard, so hopefully it will come through a little clearer than it has. The only problem is, I don't know what it looks like to you guys, but on my screen, uh, everything's kind of greenish and yellowish. And uh, well, next week we'll have to work on the lighting. But um, I wanted to share with you um, some encouragement from Scripture about anxiety. Anxiety is something that is a part of many people's lives. Um, and I do a lot of work with university students. And when I first started doing that five or six years ago, I was researching different studies and uh, surveys. And uh, there was one in Canada, Canada that said that um, about half of university students could say that they had felt some level of pretty intense anxiety over the previous year. Um, in terms of what has happened in our situation with the pandemic over the last couple of months. And again, you might be watching this in 2023 and you're like, what pandemic? But today on, on May 24th, 2020, we're in any of the month three of pretty much a societal lockdown to try and prevent the spread of COVID-19. And some surveys have been done about anxiety in, in relation to the pandemic. And uh, the Guardian newspaper reported that about half of British citizens reported some level of anxiety as a result of the pandemic and the lockdown. A, a survey in Canada reported that under normal circumstances, Canadians reporting high levels of anxiety is about 5% of the population. But a recent study in the middle of COVID says it's now about 20% of the population. Anxiety is very real in many people's lives. Uh, for some, it goes as far as causing a tendency to worry more. But for others, it's debilitating. It's paralyzing. It causes you not to be able to do what you want to do or to do what you need to do because of the anxiety. I looked at a couple of scripture verses in the New Testament, and we're going to look at them in a couple of minutes. But uh, in the original Greek, the New Testament was written in Greek. And in, well, there's the microphone. I had it out of the screen until I moved my laptop, and now it's back in the screen. Oh, well, can't keep any secrets, can we? Um, the original Greek, where the New Testament was written in Greek, the word anxious or anxiety means dividing and fracturing a person into parts. It means to be drawn in different directions. One... Um, Dictionary said, described it as to go to pieces because of being pulled apart. And I thought that was a really good way of putting um, what anxiety is and how it's caused. We get pulled in different directions and it causes us anxiety. We get pulled in different directions because of different people's opinions of what we should do, what we should say, how we should act, what we should believe. We get pulled in different directions by our own emotions and um, how we respond to different situations around us that can pull us in different directions. We get pulled in different directions by the life situations themselves. And we can be um, employees and employers and, and husbands and wives and, and parents and children and students and, and grandchildren and grandparents and have all these roles in our lives each one, each context, demanding something different of us. And it can pull us in all kinds of different directions and it can create anxiety. Um, for students, especially the university students that I work with, just the, the point of choosing what school to go to. I know a few students even in our own church who are at that position now of which university am I going to go to? Which program am I going to study? And then there are others who are at the tail end of their university and it's like, now what do I do for a career? What do I do for a job? And if you get pulled in all these different directions, anxiety can result. 
I find in the middle of this pandemic, what's causing me some measure of anxiety is just all the different medical opinions. The experts come on TV and the internet and, and often contradict each other and you get pulled in different directions and you're not sure who to listen to or what to do. Not, like I said, there's not too many times the word anxiety or anxious is used in the Bible, but we want to look at two really important verses. The first one is in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, and it says this, if you're able to see it on your screen, cast all your anxiety on God because he cares for you. 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on God because he cares for you. You ever go fishing? I'm not a big fisherman, but I live in a town in Port Hope where a river runs through it. And we get salmon and trout that go up the river and people come in the spring and the fall to fish. And they stand in the river and they cast. They take their fishing rod and they throw the line as far out from them as they can and just cast for the fish. The scripture verse here doesn't say to, to lay all our anxieties before God or to hand them to Him. It says to cast them, to throw them as far from yourself as you can and to throw them as far into God's sphere as you possibly can. To, ca to cast all our anxieties on Him. And we can do that, it says, because He cares for us. He cares about you. He loves you. And he wants us to be, to be pulled in one direction, not into the direction of his love, into the direction of his care. That he can be the source of what we need to be able to deal with our anxiety. Another scripture verse, which is one of my favorites, is um, Philippians chapter 4, and that's in verse 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Do not be anxious about anything. Now, if it had just stopped there, if the scripture just said, don't be anxious, that would be kind of unfair. It would be kind of frustrating. Um, it would be like, oh, great, easy for you to say. There's a skit that I see on the internet with one of my favorite comedians, Bob Newhart, and he's playing a counselor, and someone comes into him with a problem, and he says, you know, I charge ten dollars for my counseling because it's only going to take five minutes. And the person's like, oh, that's amazing. Okay, let me tell you my problem. And uh, so he says, well, I'm going to tell you what to do about your problem. And she says, should I write this down? She, he goes, no, 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 this, this, this is enough. I'll tell you what to do about your problem. And then he goes, stop it. Just stop it. Don't do it anymore. Stop it. And it's like, yeah, it's not always that simple. If this scripture verse had just said, well, when it comes to your anxiety, just stop it. That wouldn't be, wouldn't be fair. A lot of people, I think, sometimes misunderstand scripture and apply it incorrectly to their lives because they don't read the whole thing. They kind of see one little part of scripture and it's like, that doesn't make any sense to me or that makes me angry or I, I don't get that and then they just give up. But there's more to it. There's more to this verse than just don't be anxious about anything. And it says in every situation, we just read in First Peter that, that God cares about us. And we need to know that um, there's no situation too small. There's no situation too insignificant that goes beyond God's care and his desire to, to love us and to help us. And you might think that the cause of our anxiety might be something that we think is, is frivolous or, or, or just not important to other people, even though it means the world to us. Um, but God wants us to come to him in every situation. He says, in every situation by prayer. And that is the key. Prayer is just simply talking to God. It's simply coming into his presence, drowning out everything else around you, and taking that time to, to focus on God and to communicate with him. 
prayer isn't self-talk. It's not trying to, you know, build ourselves up. It's not simply talking to the air. Um, God is real. God is alive. He's living and active and wants to work in our lives. And he wants us to talk to him. And so it's by that prayer, by, by casting our anxieties on him and telling him about them in every situation. That's the important thing. It says to present your requests to God. A number of years ago, I ran a, a drop-in for teens in the basement of this church. And uh, we used to do prayer requests. They used to ask me, what have you seen that you'd like to pray about? And, and some of, many of them weren't kids who would go to church, but they would still want to pray about stuff. And it was like they, they had a friend that was in trouble, or they weren't, often wanted to pray for a grandparent who wasn't well, or their parents, or they always wanted to pray for others. And I asked them one time, do you have anything about yourselves that you want to pray about? And a number of them would say, well, that's not right. It's being selfish. I want to just pray about other people. I don't, God doesn't really want to hear my selfishness. And no, he doesn't want selfishness, but he says here, present your requests before him. He wants to hear about the things that are on our hearts. He wants to hear about the things that are making us anxious. And he wants us to be able to go to him and say, God, I need your help. I need your help. Yes, I will pray for other people too. I want to be aware of everybody else around me, but right now, I need your help. And God is saying, it's okay. It's okay to do that. Present your requests to God. And then the rest of the verse is the promise. And the promise is peace. It's not a promise that he's going to change the situations that are pulling you in all different directions. Often we expect God to just wave a magic wand and do that. But he might. He may, in answer to our prayer, actually change some of the situations that are pulling us in different directions. It's not a promise in this verse that he'll change the people around us that are causing us such anxiety and pulling us in different directions, though he might. The promise that he gives us, that is ironclad, I believe, because it's here in Scripture, is peace. And that's a calmness on the inside that will begin to replace the anxiety and will help us to be able to gain a perspective on all the things around us that are pulling us in different directions. And gain that perspective on all the, the people that are pulling us in different directions and it will give us the ability to be able to handle things better, to be able to, to deal with what's going on around us. The promise that he gives us is peace. And the verse says that it's a peace that transcends all understanding. And it's a peace that's going to be hard to describe. You'll, you'll feel it, you'll know it, it's there, but it's hard to put into words. I'll always remember a friend of mine years ago. Her son was tragically killed in an accident. And um, went to the funeral, the, the, the wake. And uh, this, all the young people were really upset, obviously, and crying. And the coffin was open. And it was a very, very difficult place to be. And I stood in line uh, to talk to the mom and um, thought about what I was going to say. And I got to her. She just took my hand and said, you know that verse in the Bible that talks about the peace that transcends all understanding? But that's what I'm feeling right now. But I have a peace, and I shouldn't. This makes no sense. God has given me this peace to be able to deal with what's going on right now. God wants to give each one of us a peace that will be hard to understand and hard to explain, but it'll be there. That will begin to replace the anxiety and help us to be able to deal with what's going on around us, with what is pulling us in different directions. And what that peace does, the scripture says, is it will guard your heart. The heart is the metaphorical seat of our emotions. It will guard our heart so that it, it will keep us from, our emotions from just pulling us all in different directions. The peace will, will guard us. It will keep it, us in place. 
and it will guard our minds. The mind is the, the, the seat of our thoughts. And it will keep our thoughts from running all over the place and going off in all different directions and, and, and jumping to worst case scenarios. The peace of God will guard our minds and keep us in place. So God wants to meet us in our anxieties. He wants us to cast them on him. Let's just chuck them, throw them as far as we can, and lay them in, put them at his feet. He wants us to know that he cares about us very, very much. He wants us to know that we can pray about everything, no matter how insignificant it might seem. Tell God your anxious thoughts. And then the peace that passes understanding. God will begin to enable us to rest in his peace and to guard our hearts and minds and keep us in place. Right now, with the pandemic, a lot of us are uh, going through what is being called stay in place orders. I think they're using that phrase more in the States than in Canada, but a stay in place order. God is wants to give us that feeling of being able to stay in place when we're being pulled in all different directions. And our emotions and our thoughts and everything is being pulled in different directions. Allow God to work in your heart and life. Let me help you stay in place. And give you the peace that you need in the midst of anxiety. Father, I thank you for your love and your care for us. Thank you, Lord, that you understand our, our human frailties. You understand our conditions, you understand that there are things that make us anxious. And you're here for us, and I thank you, Lord. So I pray that you give us the courage to not hang on to our anxieties, but to to cast them, throw them at your feet. That you give us the courage to be able to come to you in prayer and just tell you our anxious thoughts. And Lord, I thank you that there's nothing insignificant that we can tell you. You care about every part of our lives. And Lord, I pray for myself and for anyone listening, for all the people in our circle of sphere of influence, that, um, that we all would find your peace. In the midst of different things that are pulling us in different directions and causing us to not know what to do and even debilitating us and paralyzing us, I pray, Lord God, that we would find in you the peace, the passive understanding. Our hearts and our minds would be guarded. And that because of that, we would be able, with your strength and your help, to deal with what is going on around us in life. I pray, Lord, for anyone who is experiencing really severe anxiety, that you would just be very real for them, even now. That your presence would be very real, that you'd give them, even now, before they even ask taste of your peace that passes understanding. Let them know that they can come to you. Lay their anxieties at your feet. And receive your peace. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, thanks again for joining me. And uh, next week we'll work on the lighting. This week we worked on the sound. I hope it worked. Next week, we'll work, work on the lighting. And by the time this pandemic's over, we'll be professionals with this and have it perfect. And we won't, we won't need to do it anymore. God bless you. Have a great week. We'll talk to you again soon.